Assalamualaikum and a very good day everyone. My name is Muhammad Zaki Mas'ud and I'll be your instructor for this part 3 which is the viruses and other malicious code. Let's get started and enjoy your learning. First, we explore how the virus attach. Virus can attach using the append viruses which executes it, execute first then transfer the control to the original program. A surround virus which has a control before and after the regular program or the integrated viruses replace some of the target program and all the target and give the effect that the target program works. The virus is attached on the original program. For example, a new function or package are abandoned to the original program and can be executed when the user executed the original program. This is what we call as the virus append to a program. Now we explore how the viruses gain control. The virus again can gain control. Uh, the virus need to have the CPU executed to be in control. One way is to override the program on the disk. Another is to move the original program and then after the CPU execute, it then transfer the control to the program. Uh, another way is by installing itself in memory and change the pointer of the operating system or interrupt table to the point to it. Now we get to know type of viruses. The first one is the parasitic virus which attaches itself to executable file as part of their code and it run whenever the host program runs. Second, a type of virus that resides in a memory. It lodges in a main, me main memory as part of the residual operating system. The third one is the boot sector virus, which infect the boot sector of a disk and spreads when the operating system boots up the original DOS viruses. Start viruses is explicitly designed to hide from a virus scanning program and we have another one which is called polymorphic viruses which mutates or changes its signature every time it infected other hosts. So where is this virus came from? The source of the viruses can be from a small it can be so small it can hide very easily in a large program. It can hide in a compiler, a database manager, or a file manager. And the number one spot of a virus is coming from an attachment email or from some downloaded file from a public URL. What is the phases of viruses? When virus infect, it can be in a dormant phase, which the virus is idle. It's infected the host but doing nothing. A propagation phase where the virus place an identical copy of itself into other programs. A triggering phase, which the virus is activated to perform the function for which it was intended. And finally, the execution phase where it executes the function that it should be performed. Next, we explore the large-scale malware worms, which can be defined as the code that self-propagates or replicates across the system by arranging to have itself immediately executed. What we mean by propagation? Propagation is including the notion on targeting and exploit. An example of it is a botnet, which is set of compromised machine or bots under a common, common command and control or CNC. A rapid propagation worm can potentially spread quickly because they paralyze the process of propagating and replicating. Same holes for viruses but they often spread more slowly since requires some sort of a user action to trigger each propagation. A worm can infect other hosts 
automatically without any user interaction. How can worm attacks? A worm can infect an original program, but when the program goes to another host, the worm itself is going to replicate and infected the other host. The characteristic of a worm is a self-contained and do not require a host. It replicates. It's activated by quitting process. For network worms, replication occurs across communication links. Worms exploit flaws in the operating system or inadequate system management to replicate. Release of a worm usually result in a brief but spectacular outbreak shutting down the entire networks. How can we protect against worms? Well, protection against worm requires a combination of basic system security and a good network security. We need to have an add-on tools a configuration review tools, a checksum base change detection tools, and also an intrusion detection tools. Also need a network security tools, a wrapper program, or filter network connection, or a firewall system. The next type of malicious codes is a trap DOS or the salami and the salami attacks. A trap DOS are often caused by a programmer's leaving debug routine in the codes or failure to check array bounds which lets code overrun the array bounds and get placed on the stacks. The cause of a trap DOS normally is because a programmer forgets to remove them, a programmer intentionally leaves them in for testing, or leave them in intentionally for maintenance of the finished products. Where else, the salami attacks refer to the simple fact that when dealing with real numbers, the computer has a fixed size and will perform rounding or truncations. There will always be those programmers that will try to conceal the small amount on the hope that the human will not notice it. Next, we move on to the web application vulnerabilities. As you know, nowadays, a lot of system are being accessed can be accessed online. For that, there is a tab, top 10 web apps vulnerabilities associated to an online application. The first one is the cross-site scripting, injection plus, malicious file executions, insecure direct objects, cross-site request forgery, information leakage, and improper error handling. These are the example of a cross-site scripting stored cross-site scripting. Whereas this is an example of a cross-site scripting reflectors cross-site scripting. Well guys, we are the last slide of this session. The next video will be on the subtopic of a control against program threats. Hope this, session, hope this sharing session has given you some new knowledge on the viruses and other malicious code. Anyone who wants to know more about this topic, don't hesitate to contact me at the email below. See you next time. Assalamualaikum and a very good day.